Our presentation is on gum disease by Amelie Rousseau, Blair Doucette, Selena Byerly, Megan Clements, and Sarah Clark Williams. Gum disease is very common in the States. It affects up to 50% of Americans at some point in their lives at varying, varying levels of severity. It affects the tissue that surrounds the tooth, so mostly the gums, um, which technically includes the gingiva, the periodontal ligament, and the alveolar bone. Now, in its infant stages, it's called gingivitis and will present with redness, swelling, bleeding of the gums, uh, especially when you floss or brush. It usually does not have any pain associated with it, so many people will not know they have it. Um, but if not addressed and treated, and if uh, one doesn't clean their teeth properly, it will then degrade into periodontitis, which is a gingival inflammation with actual loss of the alveolar bone. And the gum actually starts receding from the tooth, which means that plaque and bacteria can more easily access um, the bone and the roots of the, te of the teeth. And gingivitis and periodontitis can affect people at any age and regardless of gender, but there are certain times where we need to be more careful. So it's most often diagnosed when people are 30 or 40 years old, and that may be because they haven't developed the proper habits um, in their younger years or they haven't had adequate access to dental care. As a teenager, it's really common to show signs of gingivitis, um, which can then inflame the gums and become periodontitis. Also, women, well, anytime they're going through hormonal changes, so that can be during puberty, pregnancy, and menopause, um, because of those hormonal changes, they're more at risk because their gums have more circulation going to them. They're more likely to get inflamed. So it's really important that women at any age of life, um, but especially around these key times of change, really clean their teeth well. Um, some, it is possible that um, if a woman has periodontitis, it, the bacteria from the plaque get, may get into the bloodstream and possibly harm the fetus. So sometimes dentists recommend that a pregnant woman get extra cleaning. Also, people who um, have diabetes are at higher risk for developing gum disease. And part of that is lifestyle factors, and part of that is um, because of their condition. So as we mentioned before, the first stage, gingivitis. Swollen, gums, bleeding, irritated, especially when flossing or brushing. And if left untreated, the bacteria will continue to grow, the plaque will continue to build up, inflammation will continue, which may result in really bad breath, um, painful chewing, receding gums, sensitive teeth, which may start to loosen, and gum abscesses, which is pus that collects under the gums or teeth. So the pattern of periodontitis can vary depending on the person. Um, and sometimes it can take months to years for gingivitis to become periodontitis. There's two different kinds of periodontitis. There's aggressive, which uh, progresses really quickly and the bone loss, uh, bone begins to deteriorate very quickly. Or chronic periodontitis, which has a slower progression with periods of faster loss. So there are several serious risks of undertreatment. First, progression of gum disease, so possibly leading to losing your teeth. Um, and painful uh, chewing and eating, brushing. Your teeth may have to be extracted. Um, there's also painful abscesses that can develop, gum recession, and uh, as we mentioned before, increased complications from pregnancy, as well as we know that uh, plaque can get into the bloodstream and make a patient more at risk for heart disease and diabetes type 2. So people with gum disease are at a higher risk for developing some serious conditions, cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases, pregnancy with low birth weight, Alzheimer's disease, some types of cancer, and obesity. Um, poorly maintained diabetes may also increase the risk of developing gum disease, which can of course turn into periodontitis. All right, look out. It's acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis or trench mouth. So trench mouth is pretty rare. 
um, but some signs of it are if you get painful ulcers on your gums, your gums are receding between your teeth, you get a metallic taste in your mouth, you have difficulty swallowing or talking, and you get a high temperature and fever because of the infection. So if you have any of these symptoms, go to a dentist immediately. Okay, so what can we do about it? Some common treatment methods include scaling and root planing, where at the dentist they'll get under your gum and scrape the plaque and tartar out from below the gum line. Uh, tray delivery, gum grafting, laser treatment, uh, regenerative um, implementation, dental crown lengthening, implants, pocket reduction, and plastic surgery. So all of these can be um, have varying levels of invasiveness and cost. So just make sure you floss and brush your teeth. All right, so how can we prevent this in the first place? Well, as we mentioned, uh, you can brush twice a day, floss daily, uh, get regular cleanings every six months or so. Uh, avoid sugar. Okay, that doesn't mean never eat sugar, but um, avoiding sweeteners, dried fruit, sticky candy, um, and then trying to brush your teeth immediately after eating those foods can be really helpful. Also, not smoking. So smoking can um, just increase inflammation and can actually speed up um, disease progression. So like many, for many, many reasons, don't smoke. So a lot of people want to know about fluoride and is it helpful? Is it harmful? Well, it's a controversial issue and I encourage everyone to do their own research. Um, there is a lot of data that says that fluoridated water does lower the rates of cavities in children and adults in cities where it is implemented. However, there are also a lot of uh, fluoride toxicities reported um, from CDC. So it's, it's, it's a complicated issue. And I think anything where um, you have too much of something, it's not good. So do your own research. Um, most conventional toothpaste and mouthwash have fluoride in it. Um, but again, it's possible to overdose on it and it can be toxic and fatal. So um, there's also alternatives to fluoride for you and your family. Um, things like neem, turmeric, um, many other things that are natural and you can't um, overdose on them. So it's good to do your own research, talk to your dentist about what's best for you. All right, as we are nutritionists, we're going to talk about what to eat to avoid gingivitis and periodontitis. All right, so as usual, eat fruits and vegetables. So you wanna eat both raw and cooked to give teeth and gums a workout. Yes, your gums can get weak if you just eat soft, mushy food. And as you age, your gums will actually get weaker. So it's important to keep eating raw things as we age. Uh, we wanna eat lean protein, so things like eggs, beans, um, as well as incorporating fatty fish or supplementing with fish oil. Fermented dairy has actually been shown to a lower rates of periodontal disease, so that's yogurt, um, and I think that the probiotics in other fermented foods would also be really helpful in suppressing growth of pathogens. There's been a lot of research on anthocyanins, so that's uh, red and purple foods, uh, cranberries, red cabbage, eggplant, black rice, raspberries, um, all really good foods that are antioxidating and helpful for preventing inflammation. Cranberries especially have been shown to lower the risk of um, plaque and bacteria sticking to the teeth, so make sure and incorporate those. Um, there's also mouthwash that has cranberry extract in that, so that might be something you want to incorporate in your daily oral hygiene routine. Green tea is also shown to lower the back, mouth bacteria um, toxic products. So make sure you're getting some green tea in your diet. And again, avoid processed sugary foods, AGEs, and inflammatory foods um, like fried foods, um, a lot of refined carbs, like anything white, white sugar, white flour, white rice, things like that. If you're interested in taking supplements for your teeth, um, vitamin C and B12 are really important. Um, ideally, you get these from Whole Foods, 
um, but sometimes if you're vegetarian or vegan, it can be harder to get B12, and so you'd want to take supplements. B12 is coming from animal sources. Arginine is also another thing that can help uh, remove the bacterial film on your teeth and can help balance the pH in your mouth. CoQ10 has been shown to, um, deficiencies in it have been shown to lead to periodontal disease. So make sure you're getting enough of that, especially if you're on other medications that will lower your uptake of it. Fluoride. Fluoride, you can supplement with fluoride through mouthwash, um, toothpaste, and um, other things like that. It prevents the decalcification in the body. And here we have our references from our presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned a lot more about gum disease. Make sure you floss and brush today.